Coming up next, we've got the infamous James Baber. Let's hear for James Baber. Hey, that's a sub tea party. All right, tonight we're going to take a look at the rise of the Tea Party in American politics through the eyes of a rabid liberal. We're going to walk through some of their brief history, a few of their key characteristics, and why ultimately I think they're going to fail. So any, so any conversation with the uh, Tea Party needs to start with Ron Paul. It was during his 2008 failed presidential bid that his libertarian views of limited government and financial conservatism really took hold with a lot of the populace. This grew when Bush gave $700 billion away to the banks, and then Obama tried to do $800 billion as far as a stimulus package. It was really the stimulus package that got a bunch of conservative bloggers together to try to organize the first Tea Party protest. These two guys who you can barely see tried to send tea bags to Congress. That was an awesome idea. And then these two women fight over who got the actual first protest. It was Kelly Callender, however, who in Seattle contacted conservative super blogger and crazy bitch Michelle Malkin, <laughs> who really started publicizing. The, the real tipping point to get this thing into the media, though, was Rick Santilli of CNBC, who did his ramp her around the world in Chicago and called for the first widespread Tea Party protest. And then conservative mega parasite Glenn Beck heard about it and became the sole evangelical PR agent of the movement. God, he sucks. Anyway, he organized a Tea Party protest on D.C. in December. 75,000 people. And all of a sudden, the Republican standbys started to see a potential for a 2008-type Obama grassroots campaign. They jumped on board. They actually paid that bitch 100 grand to speak at their convention. It's insane. This candidate, oh, that got screwed up. Uh, this candidate, Scott Brown out of Massachusetts, posing here naked in a 1982 magazine, or Cosmo magazine. It's real, you can go find him, he's handsome. Anyway, he used the Tea Partiers to win the Massachusetts Senate seat, which is not easy to do. So, what happens if you're a liberal and you run into a Tea Party? It's kind of like avoiding a bear, so we're going to walk through a few understands, right? Yeah, roar. I failed that slide, this is not what I wanted to say. So, first understand that your Tea Party is going to be white, very angry, and they can quickly gather in numbers. So, cover up any Obama t-shirts, pins, or other paraphernalia you might have. And if you get spotted with Obama stuff, just say for you, you forgot to add, is a socialist afterwards, and you should be all right. <laughs> also, understand that they're likely armed. <laughs> this is really, really important to realize, but if you follow the following research, you should be able to avoid a precarious situation. For example, anthropologists seem to understand that the Tea Party does not like Obama. <laughs> Once again, well, cover up your Obama social, you know, cover up your Obama paraphernalia by saying you forgot to write as a socialist. And it's widely understood that your average teabagger doesn't likely understand the tenets of actual socialism. So just pick out an MSNBC personality or a Democratic personality and say they're a fucking socialist and you should be in like Flynn. Also, you do wise to understand the programming of Fox content. They suck, but just try to stick with me. This way you can go, hey, did you catch that Fox and Friends today? Or did you, did you see Hannity rail on Obama the other night? You're gonna fit in just fine, you won't be murdered. And if all else fails, fall back on hating Obama. It's funny though, because for as much as they hate Obama, this movement's desperately trying to follow what he did in 2008 as far as getting a grassroots campaign going. The funny thing is, so, oh, I'm fucking this one up already, this is awesome. So, they're trying to replicate what Obama did in 2008, but they're ultimately going to fail because there's not a single Tea Party movement. It's actually hundreds of separate movements throughout the country who all have their own priorities and are trying to push various really, really extremely conservative agenda. But Republicans have already opened Pandora's box. And every time this election cycle that a Republican's not running somebody who's uber conservative, they're throwing up their own candidates. Ron Paul's son ran out of Kentucky, Crazy, crazy Sharon Engel out of Nevada, Google her, she's fucking insane. And Ken Buck potentially is gonna win the seat here in Colorado. All of these people, even if they win, are just gonna hurt their own movement. They keep on pushing agenda like privatizing social security, abolishing the Department of Education, and <laughs> this one just kills me, rolling back the Civil Rights Act for private businesses. 
How does that make sense? In the end, even if they win the Republican primaries, there's no way they're going to move it past the general election. And that is why they're going to fail. Hope you guys enjoyed my little rant about the Tea Party. And if there's any Tea Partiers in the room, please, please, please don't kill me. Let's hear it again for James. Keep it going.